Hello, everyone. Good evening. I am so excited to see everybody here this evening. Um, I hope everybody can see me. Lisa, can you give me some feedback? Am I visually on here? Can you hear me fine? I can hear you, but I cannot see you. Okay, so let's turn me off. Sometimes I have to try this several times and turn me back on again. How about this? Now? Yes, hi. <laughs> hi. Hey folks, I want to apologize in advance for all of the packages behind me. I bet you can't guess what I'm getting prepared for. Uh, and it's coming up in just a little over a month. <laughs> so yes, you're seeing all my Christmas decorations and presents I have to wrap that I'm collecting behind me. I'm getting all excited about the holiday season. And uh, I hope that you folks are too. Uh, earlier this evening, I got to celebrate an early Thanksgiving dinner with a couple of friends. And that was always really exciting. It was just a great way to break into this season for me. And I want to take a moment because I'm really thinking about Thanksgiving. Obviously, we're coming into Thanksgiving week here in the US. And I want to wish everybody who's here with me this evening, wherever you are in the world, a very, very happy Thanksgiving and an even more happy holiday season. So from, from my, in my heart, my family, my loved ones, Lisa too, to all of you, happy, happy holidays. This is gonna be the best holiday season, I think, in a long, long time. So folks, as we get started, I'm going to do a little bit of housekeeping first. Um, I see some new names here. So there are obviously a few people who are uh, just visiting with me this evening for the first time. So I'm going to give you a quick overview of how, how the Psychic Hour works. I do these hours monthly. And of course, those of you who've been with me for years know they're always for free. Uh, this is a gift that I give to you folks because you just do such wonderful things for me all year long. This is my way of giving back to you every month for just a little bit. Now, I did get a couple of uh, emails earlier this evening from people who I guess are new. And so you're, you know, you're so excited. You want to ask your question of me early. Folks, I don't even look at them. My apologies. But any email that I received before the hour, I have to flush. I have to even take it off of, uh, right off of my computer. Um, so if you did send me an email earlier this evening with a question, you are going to have to resubmit it when the hour is finished. And here's the reason I do that. Um, there's a little, little lesson here in how psychic energy works. Anyone that I speak with, as my guides are coming in and I'm moving into doing this hour, anyone I speak with or communicate with, I'm creating a psychic link to that person. And that makes it unfair for everybody else on the call because now it's as if the whole call is gonna be for that one person. So I just can't even look at the emails. So if anyone sends me anything early, just you know, please my apologies, but it's gonna be flushed out of my computer system. Um, so you know, if you wanna send anybody something early, send it to Lisa, don't send it to me, <laughs> okay? It won't matter to Lisa. <laughs> She'll just save it and send it to me at the end of the hour, which is what you're gonna to have to do if you send something to me earlier. Now, here's what this is all about. Some of you who are new are saying, what on earth is Sandy talking about? Folks, everyone who comes to the Psychic Hour, if you stay to the end of the hour, I do give you the opportunity to send me your simple question. And I treat it the same way I do the questions I'm able to answer during the time that I'm with you on the hour itself. And what that means is that when you're called on by Lisa, because she's my person who's in the chat room and she'll call on you. Sometimes she answers your questions. If you type them into the chat, she's capable of doing that too. Um, or she'll read them out to me to answer. So here's what you need when you get called on. I want your first name. I want where you're calling from. What That could be what state or what country. I want what your sun sign is. I work with this chart that you see here. See my cursor, you see here on the, on the screen. That chart's called a horary astrology chart. And it is going to answer the questions of everyone who's here on the call with me this evening. It'll hit everybody. It's a throwaway chart. It's only good for one night. So 
I want your sun sign because when I answer a question for you, my guides are going to come through and everyone else who is that sign or has something to do with that sign is going to get answers too. So they don't just belong to you. Okay, so that's my way of hitting everybody in the audience, which means that even if I'm not calling on you, you need to pay attention because my guides have a way of answering the questions for everybody who is here right on the hour during the time that we're here together. It's pretty amazing how we can do that. And of course, if your question doesn't get answered, I want everybody to leave happy. So at the end of the hour, you get to send me a short email if you didn't get called on. And again, I'm gonna want your name, first name, where you're calling from, what your sun sign is, and then your simple question that I will answer. And uh, give me a week or, or a little more maybe at this time of year to answer the question, but I do get back to all those questions. So thank God that I only can afford to have maybe a hundred people on here <laughs> because otherwise I'd never get to answer all of those questions. Okay, folks, I think that's pretty clear now. Um, and remember, if you want to send me your simple question, you've got to stay until the end of the hour. Now, let me do that housekeeping I mentioned. I'm just going to go around and, and give you an explanation, a quick one, of what all of these wonderful things are I've got posted on your screen. Uh, first of all, you know my website is www.sandyanastasi.com. Go there to sign up for the Psychic Hour or to see what I'm teaching or where I'm going to be doing an event next. It's all posted right on my website. Also, folks, if you download the app, you're going to be able to listen to these psychic hours right on your smartphone or your tablet. Uh, as long as you're internet connectable, you can utilize that. And that means that even if the uh, web, web you know, the internet itself is down, you're going to be able to access the app directly through your telephone, and you'll always be able to make these psychic hours. So do download the app. It's, it's kind of a safeguard. And everything you need from my website will be there. Now, I have recently, when I say recently, within the last year, I've created an open community that anyone who signs up to my newsletter is automatically invited to join the open community. Folks, join it. Because we all need to have a place where we can communicate with people that are of like mind and have interests similar to ours, and that's safe. And that describes the open community on my website. So do sign up for my newsletter and do join the open community and post in it. Lisa and I do see all those posts. Sometimes we respond and uh, it, it has a way of keeping the whole open community really filled with nice people who communicate, who are gifting you with pieces of themselves as they communicate. So get on there and, and enjoy the interaction. It's small right now, but with your help, I know that we can build it. Now, VIP members, okay, uh, did you know that in the VIP community, I have my complete astrology series now. So you can actually get a whole equivalent of a college degree in astrology right now, all on audio in my VIP. So if you're not a VIP member, believe me, that's a good reason to become one so that you can do all those studies that really aren't available anyplace else. Um, my book is there now too, Astrology, Art, and Science. So if you join the VIP community, you get all that stuff. Uh, plus, there's over like 100 different classes that you can download that are all free once you are a member. And right now, of course, I'm running my VIP. Uh, I always do a promotion during the fall of the year. And December, we're moving into the last month of that promotion. So if that interests you, you're, you're going to want to make that a point of joining that, gifting that to yourself this holiday season. Um, folks, I want to announce this in case you haven't seen it in my newsletters. Uh, my What's Coming in 2023 webinar is coming up on December 8th. That's at 7 p.m. It's only $25. Don't miss it, folks. Um, like the Psychic Hour, I have limited attendance. And so if you want to get in on that and hear it live and be part of it and have my guides be able to address things directly to you, uh, you really do need to get in there and, and get uh, yourself registered right away because that's going to fill up. It does every year. And it's absolutely phenomenal. Last year, uh, the information that my guides, I don't know, by the way, I have no idea 
what is going to come through during that webinar until I'm actually giving it. And last year, they gave a rundown, blow by blow, of almost all the major things that have happened in our world. I'm getting little chills uh, right up until until now. They're still those predictions are still going to the end of the year. It was absolutely pretty amazing. I re-listened to it um, back in July just to see how it how it played out. And I was flabbergasted. See, I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth until it's out. So I'm I'm learning these things along with you, okay? Because my guides channel the information through me. So don't miss it, folks. It only happens once a year. And if you now you can purchase it after the fact, but it's not the same as being there live. Because if you're live, your personal interests are going to get addressed. My guides actually answer you <laughs> as as they're giving that information now if you're on or if you're pre-registered and you, you something comes up and you can't make it you're going to get the recording of it so even if you don't make it um, once you're registered once you pay your your price you're you're getting that recording okay now did you miss these there's a couple of web classes that i've had up for sale on my site that are normally 25 dollars and I have discounted them for you uh, probably through the end of this year for only $10 you can get them. They're video classes. Um, the first one is an intro to spirit communication and the second one is an I'm not psychic or am I? Uh, so if either one of those interests you, my suggestion is get them. They're available right now probably through the end of the year and that's an unheard of price to be able to get those at. They normally sell for $25 when I allow them to be sold, okay? Uh, they're part of my Evolution of Consciousness series, and that series is a almost $300 program. So this is a really good, uh, good price on them. Now, if you're in my VIP uh, group, please note that your next coaching call is gonna be January 19. Uh, next year, the VIP coaching hours are gonna be held quarterly, and the first one is January 19th. Our next psychic hour is December 11th. So in just a couple of weeks, folks, we're going to have another psychic hour. Please don't forget that and put it on your calendars. I'm doing the hour earlier this year in December uh, because I know as we get closer to the holidays, everybody is just so busy. It's very, very hard to schedule this in. So uh, this way we can all be here. So put it on your calendar, December 11th. And uh, this is my specials. You'll see these in my newsletters uh, for November and December. And I've got to tell you, on the December ones, you're getting a preview. Nobody else is seeing this because the December specials are not going to be put up on my website for about another week. They won't go up until, until after uh, Black Friday is done. So here you get a chance to see what's coming. I have three Black Friday specials that are all through November, and I am extending them through December. So my year to glance reading is back. That reading is $300. And be aware that what that reading entails is an overview of your year and then a blow by blow, month by month. This is what's coming for you. Be prepared for this. You can face this challenge at this time. You can overcome it this way. Um, this is the time, the best time to look for a job. This is the best time to make that move of residence. This month, if you do it, you're going to have this struggle. It's pretty amazing, okay? So when you get that year at a glance reading, you're being given an opportunity to plan your year <laughs> in advance. Folks, I have people who've been coming to me for 20 years getting their year at a glance reading uh, every year. If you are interested in that, Sign up for that as soon as this webinar ends, because this is limited. I only can take a certain number of people. When we get to February 29th, I stop doing the reading. Um, there's no point in getting it because we're too far into the year. And I only have a limited number of spaces available for people during that first two months of the year. And even if you decide to get it early and, and get that reading during December, Believe it or not, there are not enough spaces. I'm going to have people backed up in, in February saying, gee, how come I can't get my year at a glance reading? Because all those spaces are going to be filled. And uh, so they're filling up right now. Lisa's already having trouble finding, finding places to put people. 
So if that interests you, please sign up for it. Get, get your spot. My VIP membership drive, I told you, it's continuing through the end of the year. And each month from September through December, I've been giving a special giveaway. Giveaway for uh, November, it's still available for the next week, was what's on the other side. I thought that was great to, to put that there because it's kind of like an honor of Halloween. And the special giveaway for December is going to be 12 ways to open your own gifts. So that's uh, basically directions on how to handle your psychic ability. Those are both MP4 videos and you get them included with your library when you uh, pay for the full first year of your VIP. And that would be $197. We do offer payment plans. You can, you can pay them in a lot of different ways. You can talk to Lisa about that, but it's got to be paid in full to get your free gift. Okay, early bird special for the Anastasia System of Psychic Development is still available. It'll be available through December 31st. It's being extended. Folks, if you want to study with me in 2023 to develop your psychic abilities, get on this. Do it now. Register. Because by registering under the early bird special, that's right up through December 31st, and then it cuts off. It's done then. You're going to save $775 if you register before December 31st. So we were originally going to do it through the end of this month. We've extended it through the end of December. You basically are getting, there are six levels that you go through. It takes you from the beginner level all the way up to your mediumship and seeing beyond the veil, special extra class thrown in there, and you get one whole level and then part of another if you register early. So there's a huge savings in there by registering now. Um, my next one uh, special, if you purchase my six reading or coaching package, and I only offer this once a year, you're gonna be able to register for half hour sessions, they're normally an hour, the whole, whole, whole package is $1,250 through December 31st, and that means you're saving $250 off of the regular price, which is $1,500. But also, you can get your half-hour sessions instead of the hour sessions, which means that you can intersperse those six sessions all through the year and make it work for you as a constant, ongoing coaching or, or psychic reading, you can interchange them with Sandy, okay? So this is another thing that's only offered once a year that I think a lot of you might be interested in. Okay, I'm done with all of my, uh, my offerings that are coming up and I'm ready to take some questions. Lisa, who's our first person? All righty, our first person. Tonight is going to be Alice. Alice, can you unmute yourself? Hello. Hey there, Alice. I'm first? <laughs> Hello. You're first. How are you? I'm good. <laughs> How are you this evening? Awesome. So I'm good. I am um, a crabby cancer calling from Colorado. Do we still say what we're thankful for? I can't remember if you said that. I'm sorry, you went too fast for me. <laughs> I do talk fast. Um, yeah. I couldn't remember if we're still supposed to say what we're grateful for. I, did you say that? Yeah. Oh, and thank you for reminding me. How can I forget that? Just before Thanksgiving, when we are giving thanks. <laughs> yes. Well, Alice, what are you grateful for? I was just trying to think of something. I was, and then just in general, I think uh, I'm most grateful that I'm a pretty lucky person. I have a really nice life, comfortable life. I have a good job, great family. Awesome. And yeah. Alice, there, there are no accidents. The, the universe doesn't make accidents. If you have a great, comfortable life, you have a great, comfortable, wonderful life because you have done all of the things, rejected all the things to create that great, comfortable life. So kudos to you, and thank you for sharing with us. You know, oh, you. Just that we can all create that, folks. We can all create that. We've got to have that positive attitude and positive feeling to watch it unfold. And so you're not a crabby kid, are you? <laughs> <laughs> not usually. 
before you ask your question, okay, here's Alice. Cancer is this sign over here on the left of the chart where the rising sign is, and you'll see it's 18 degrees. So half of Alice is in the unconscious. You do a lot of unconscious work on yourself this month, aren't you, girl? And mm -hmm. right now. And the other half, because there are only 30 degrees in a sign, the other half is in the first house. So a lot of that unconscious work you've been, you've been doing while looking into your unconscious has been looking at your own personal needs, your own personal desires. And because it's balancing with the seventh house, which is relationships with Pluto is, you're kind of looking at a lot of the relationships in your life that maybe you have built a lot of your life around and saying, you know, I need to take a little space back for myself. I'm being given to feel like I'm being controlled by circumstance instead of by what my desires and my wants are. So you're creating a little bit of a right now, and you're really getting in touch with your subconscious needs. We're getting a lot of feedback on, on the mic. Um, I don't know why that is. But um, if I you noticed could, that too. Is that is that from me? That's from you. If you could mute yourself, and then when when you're ready to go on with your question, I'll say, okay, ask the rest. Okay. Um, now that same that's going to affect, by the way, all of the cardinal signs. It's going to affect you if you are a Cancer or a Capricorn or an Aries or a Libra. Now watch what I'm going to show you too. This is also a square aspect to Chiron. That's the healing planet. So there's a lot of healing going on for you cardinal sign people, and of course Alice is one of them. And there's also a square aspect going on to the moon. So Alice is doing a lot of looking at, and so all you cardinal people, you, the greater family around you. And that could include your family of choice, close friends. It could include your blood family. It could, could include some of the older people in your family that you have concerns for. It could include your own family, that nuclear family, the children that you want to have gathered around you in the holiday season. And these four things that are being filled here, these four signs, are creating a grand cross for Alice. Now, if you're not a Cancer, it's just creating a T-square, okay? Now, if you're not a Cancer, right now you're putting enormous energy and time and effort into everything concerning your household, your home, your family, people in your family. But if you're a cancer like Alice, you're feeling as if there just aren't enough time in the day, not enough hours, because everybody wants a piece of you right now. So you're having to fulfill this need and this need and this need and this need. And there is a little bit of a tendency to get really angry at some of the close people in your life because they're not taking the burden off of you. And you may really be feeling like everything's falling on your shoulders. And you know, that's just a temporary thing. It's not a permanent, this is gonna go on forever, but that's pretty much how it is right now. And you know, holidays have a way of doing that. They bring the family together and that's loving and it's wonderful and we enjoy it, but they also have a way of increasing our pressure and our responsibility a thousandfold. And you cardinal sign people, and I'm I'm one of them too because my ascendant is cancer. So I, I get it. I certainly understand what you're going through because I am too. And what it means is we probably should slow ourselves down and remember to enjoy all these things around us, not just feel pressured by them. How am I doing, Alice? That resonated a hundred percent. Good to know that it's temporary. I usually do try to keep in mind that everything usually is temporary. Um, but yeah, spread thin, a lot on my shoulders, <laughs> especially yeah. with my kids. Yep. And I guess the frustrating thing is, is that you know, and this is for all of you cardinal people, Cancers, Capricorns, Aries, Libras, you absolutely know that if you can get it right. There's so much healing happening. It smooths things out. It feels so good. And because of that, you feel responsible for everyone. So one of the really big challenges in your life right now is to recognize that you really are only responsible for one person. That's yourself. Okay? And I know that okay. you have children under 18, right? You feel, or 21, depending on your state, you also feel like, well, I'm responsible for my children too. 
But you know, you're not really, you're responsible as a parent for providing for your child, for giving your child the best start that you're capable of giving them, for preparing them when they're really young, in their, in their toddler and early elementary ages, to face the world we live in, to give them the right values. But you are not responsible for your children's decisions. They are. And one of your biggest responsibilities as a parent is to let your kids know that, that you can guide them. And the older they get, the less control you have. So it's so important that you do a great job when they're toddlers, because as they get older and older and older, you become more and more of a guide and less and less the person who's setting down the rules and saying, this is how you have to behave. And the child does need, obviously, to obey the rules, to recognize this is what the process here in the family and in the home is. But if they choose to take the punishment instead of obeying the rules, guess what? That's their choice. Hard to be a parent, isn't it? It can be, yes. I actually feel like um, they're doing pretty well. I think that um, I'm pretty proud of the people they're, they're becoming. <laughs> and you know what that tells me? That tells me, Alice, that when they were the toddlers, that you did what every good parent did. You probably took the time from your own space in your own life, in your own world, and gave it to them. Oh, and thank you. Older, it's paying off. <laughs> Yay! That's awesome. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So, what's your own? What's your personal question? Your specific question? All right. So, my question is: um, I haven't dated for a very long time, and I am finally dating somebody that um, it's pretty new, and we have not had the conversation about whether or not we would make it exclusive yet. I'm pretty giddy about it still. <laughs> But I wanted to see if, if you could see anything, if we would make it exclusive or if this is, you know, just just a temporary, you know, like a short term thing. Uh, okay, I, before I answer that question, is he the young one? <laughs> yes, he's a lot younger than me. Cool. Okay, he's the right one. Uh, <laughs> the answer is yes and yes. Okay, so uh, yes, this has potential for longevity, and yes, you know it's a good relationship. He seems to be uh, he seems to be very concerned with whether or not um, he's going to be accepted by you and your family, and is he going to is he going to fill the shoes the way he wants to? See, and wow. uh, yeah, so you you don't see him that way. You don't you know you don't see him that way at all. Mm -hmm. um, which is good, but at the same time, there's a lot of, there's more insecurity on his part here than it is on yours. And that might be a good thing for you to know. That is really good to know because sometimes when he gets quiet, I think it's because I've said something wrong or something. So if it's that, then that might explain, you know, like. Right. He's, what, he what? open his mouth and get himself in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> He he and, will and, he will tend to move slowly, and so it's going to be up to you to kind of be the pilot in the relationship, and that might be good for you. It might be a good experience. Okay, okay, okay. And everything was so true. He moves slowly. He um, has mentioned some insecurities, uh, and he's definitely young. <laughs> yeah, I love it. And that's the first thing that jumped out at me. Hey, girl, you go. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you so much. That was fun. You're welcome. And uh, let's have our next call, Elisa. Okay, our second <clears throat> caller for the night is going to be Sandra S. We have a couple of Sandras. Sandra S. You're unmuted. Hello, Hello Sandra. Hi, Sandy. How are you? It's so good to talk to you again. I'm um, I'm from Huntsville, and I'm in Aries, and I'm honestly grateful that you called me and that I get to talk to you tonight. <laughs> well, thank you. I'm very flattered by that. 
Uh, okay, so we have another cardinal sign person. And let's see if my guides have any additional information to give us about the cardinal signs, because we're looking at this from a very different point of view right now. First off, you are an Aries, Sandra. And so this position right up here at the top of the chart, only eight degrees of it is in the ninth house, which might indicate that you're thinking about doing some traveling or maybe visiting some relatives during the holidays. Most of the sign is in the 10th house, which tells me that you're really, you know, you're kind of concerned with life direction right now. You want to get yourself on track. You think you're moving in that direction. It feels good. You know, you're, you're probably following Esther Hicks, uh, you know, comments about moving the direction that feels right. Use your intuition, follow your intuitive compass and all that. And you do feel like you're getting into a better position and you're correct. You are. Most of your concern seems to be about what do I want to do with my life? Am I in the right career path? Am I moving in the right direction? And there is a little bit of a conflict here because opposing all that good stuff, which is really, you know, Aries is supposed to be self-directed. You're supposed to be selfishly looking at what's best for you. That's what Aries is all about. But you've got this moon in Libra opposing all that good stuff. And so emotionally, you keep looking around and saying, well, my mate or partner wants me to do that. Or my, my mother said I should do that. Or my kids, my family say I should do that. And so you've got a lot of people around you that really have your best interest in, at heart. They do. But they're moving you in directions that you don't necessarily feel are the right ones. And it makes it difficult for you to really be in touch with your inner voice, with yourself. And sometimes you get really angry because sometimes this really feels like coercion or uh, manipulation or try, people trying to control you when you know in, in your heart you know it's really not what they're trying to do but you've got to learn to listen to what they say and at the same time keep your focus on what you feel you follow what I'm saying and what's happening here is it's creating this wonderful little t-square that exits into the first house and cancer and it says that this is getting you to really think about what's important to you and how can I satisfy them and keep them all happy, but in reality, do and become the person that I want to become. And so you're, you're really carving some new territory for yourself here. You're creating a new home and a new family, a new attitude towards the foundation in your whole world right now. I don't know if it if you can realize just how powerful this is, but there's a whole lot of personal healing going on. Uh, it's kind of like a, a moment of learning about self-trust and feeling like you can begin to be confident in yourself again. How am I doing? Sandra, did I lose you? Uh-oh. Lisa, can you hear me? There we go. There we go. Okay. Uh, for a minute there, I thought maybe I had gotten offline. <laughs> okay. No, no, no. I was trying to, to get you. So, yes, you um, have pretty much hit the nail on the head with where, I'm, where I am right now. I went, through, um, I went through my spiritual awakening about six years ago, and it's been uh, uh, obviously not a cyclical, not a linear path. But I feel more in touch with myself than I ever have. Um, it's ironic because in a material sense, I have less than I ever did. But I have made friends. I have completely changed my outlook on life. The only thing that I wanted to ask you about now is as wonderful in a place that I am, my family and the people around me have not experienced that. So I feel like I am living in this and, you know, I see the world with such, with such hopeful and, and just I'm, I'm so inspired by everything every day, but I can't share that with the people that I care about. And it's caused quite a rift, especially with my children. 
um, because they're not there and they haven't started that journey. So that's where I'm at now is I wanted to ask, that was my question for you is, what can I do, if anything, um, any kind of guidance for me to either, it seems like if I try to approach my children, it pushes us farther away. So I, well, it's hard for me to go and step back. Well, before I answer the question, you might have just answered it for yourself. What, when, when you approach your children and want them to see how you feel about things and they step away, what does that tell you? It tells me that they are not ready, that that's not part of their journey at this moment. And it might never be part of their journey. Now, one of the things that I teach my, my students in my Kabbalah class, this is real important. It's a, it's, a, it's a big step spiritually to understand this, to really recognize it. It's not possible for any of us to know another person's soul journey. It's not possible. Okay? When I'm doing readings and my guides are channeling information through me, I sometimes get little glimpses. That's why I call myself a soul coach. But even those little glimpses do not show me the huge, all-encompassing focus of another soul's journey through life. That's a huge thing. And so when we try to, you know, we get this enlightenment, we get this vision, we get this insight and understanding, and we are so excited about it, and we want to take the people we love most, and we want to expose them to it, we want to introduce them to it, and we can't, because we don't know their journey, okay? Um, I want to tell you how, how, how very personal your comments are to me. I have a very few people in my own family left who have passed. One of the very few who is left is a nephew that at one point in his life was on top of the world and right now lives on the streets in a tent in LA and is thankful I can still have shoes on his feet. Now, who am I to judge his soul journey? Do you understand? Yeah. What we can do is recognize to the best of our ability someone else's need and support that need. But as soon as we start to get involved, in a way that's going to manipulate or control them, we usually create greater hardship in their life. Yes. This is why it's, it's so, you know, perhaps in the direction that you're heading with your spiritual journey, you need to move away from the family in that aspect of self and find groups like this one, like the community here, or find groups in the area that you live in, in Colorado or wherever it is that you're living. So perhaps the space, the thing that you need to do is to find those people of like mind who are on a similar journey. Remember, it's going to be the same journey as you, where you can find support, because that's what you're really looking for, from people who are capable of giving you that support. And then the support you give to your loved ones was the support that they need. And maybe maybe all they're really interested in doing is getting a new job or meeting the right boy or getting the right clothing for the next job they're getting into. Does that make sense? Yes. I think Total the problem is, is that they're the people who are immediately around you, frankly, they're where you were at 15 to 20 years ago. And if you look back at what it took in your life to get you to this point, would you really want them to have to go through that? Wow. No. That really, that really rung true with me when you said that. Wow. So I see. So let, them their, you know, let them do it their own way. <laughs> okay. There, there's, believe me, their higher self has a plan 
And it's not telling you what that plan is because that's not your business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a hard one. So, you know, what, you, what I do for my nephew who lives on the street, and, and by the way, he doesn't live on the street because he has to. He lives on the street by his own choice. He keeps putting himself back on the street. It's where he wants yeah. to be. And what I do is I hold space for that nephew. I hold space. You know what we mean when we say hold space? And that's I why that's why Chiron's up here in this 10th house. You are learning to hold space for your loved ones. You're learning to hold space for your neighbors, for people on this call, for humanity. You're learning to hold that tree in your heart and know that this is where we're all going. We all have to do it in our own way. Did I answer your question, or do you have something more specific you'd like an answer to? I know that was too specific. You most certainly did. No, that's exactly what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sending hugs. Thank you, Sandy. Big hugs. Very much. I think that was a super important question. Big hugs to the kid. Hand over shoulder, hand over shoulder. Come on, everybody, give that hug. And send that hug to Sandy, too. Sending you that hug. The more we care about people, folks, it's it's kind of unfortunate, but the more we care about people, the more we end up trying to control them. And uh, that never works out. So at any rate, on to our next poll. All right, lucky number three tonight. That's going to be Brandon. Brandon, can you unmute? Hello, Sandy. How you doing? I'm good. Hi there, Brandon. <clears throat> okay, so this must be an Aries kind of night, let me tell you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, so I was in Lakeland, Florida, but I recently just relocated to Rancho Cucamongo, California. Oh, wow. I know. And uh, what I'm grateful for is trusting myself and the universe and uh everybody who just kind of led me in the direction that i needed to be in to be able to put my faith out there to really just go you know what brandon you're all right you know what you're doing let's do it <sighs> what a life changer um and uh let's see <laughs> and this is gonna my question is going to fall in line with exactly probably what you've been saying I <laughs> Oh, but, it, but it will. <laughs> um, so I've recently decided to, like I said, trust myself. And with all the input, it's to make a big career change. And I was going to go back to school and go to become a crane operator and get that certificate and, you know, do something a little different because I'm just kind of burnt out on driving all over the road. And uh, so I start that class on December 12th, and I'm just curious if there's going to be a holdover for me to find something in this new field. That's all. <laughs> Brandon, this is the oddest thing, and you're going to have to get back to me and give some feedback here. I think that something is going to come up that stops you from completing that crane operator education that you're working towards, at least right now. And there may be a delay in it. I think that you went out to where you're at for a different reason. And that reason has to do with self-healing. And I think that the healing is happening. Well, uh, I can I, I can actually agree with that because I found a place where I can actually walk down the street and just smile and feel so happy. Like, yeah. I've I've never have walked down the street and just looked up to the mountain and go, oh, there's a smile on my face. And I can't explain it. <laughs> so where you need to be for the now um, and for the time to come, I don't see you move out of there anytime in the near future. So it feels good, but something feels like it's coming up. And you know, it may be that your skills as the driver are gonna be required for something. And so, you know, or or I could be wrong. That's why I said you're gonna to have to get back to me to give me some feedback. But I keep feeling like there are blocks. There are 
there are blocks being set in the way of your becoming a crane operator, which to me is very odd because I know that's something you'd be very good at, but the timing may not be just right right now. Well, um, <clears throat> so, well, what allowed me to move was my previous employer because that was out over the road and mm -hmm. I just hit a breaking point. Um, so I ended up saying goodbye to that employer and I've taken the last week off and I haven't necessarily looked a lot, although I do have another offer to go back to driving and I'm going to take that position up until I start. Like, <laughs> the class. This is the thing, you hit it, Brandon, where you were in sync. You are going to take that position and you're going to find great joy in that position. And I think that's the thing that's going to stop you from becoming the crane operator because, you know, why do something new if you're enjoying what you're doing? True, true. So you may be just doing a different kind of driving than you used to do. There are many, you would know this because you're a driver, but there are many different kinds of driving depending on where you go and what the routes are. And this is going to be a whole different kind of driving. And it's going to be very lucrative and easier, a whole lot easier than what you were doing. Oh, yeah. Yep, it is. <laughs> You're going to really love it. And it, like I said, it's going to be more, it's going to actually turn out to be more lucrative than what you were doing. And that's a big thing as well. Yeah. It doesn't mean you can't go be a crane operator. Okay. I just don't know that you're going to. We'll see. Yeah. Yeah. Okay? Yep. Yeah. Good right. to talk to you again. <laughs> it's good seeing you and talking to you. <laughs> and Lisa, I think I'm ready for my next caller. Good luck, Brendan. Okay, your next caller tonight is going to be Marley. Marley, can you unmute? Yes, do you hear me? I hear you, Marley. Hey, how are you? I'm good. How are you this evening? Amazing. I'm very grateful for you to take my call. And I am grateful for, um, I live in Naples. So I'm very grateful. I bought the house five minutes from the beach um, a year ago, and I've been safe from the hurricane and with no, you know, a few shingles gone, but that's about it. I am getting, sh I'm here in Florida, too. I've got more than a few shingles gone. I'm just getting chills all over. You know, you had some really powerful angels looking over you, girl. Yes, yes, I know that. And they uh, told me a, a month prior the hurricane that uh, my father always, um, passed away and he have told me that he was there to protect me so yeah I'm very very, very grateful for that yep. and um, I'm, um I'm a just for me to who is the relative who smokes the pipe is that that's not your dad who is it no yeah there's a pipe you'll figure it out that's your guide. The one with the pipe is your guide. So your dad's there with this one with the pipe. <laughs> okay. 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 And my grandfather, possible. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And um, well, I am a Aquarius, February first, and uh, ascendant Capricorn. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here you are. And by the way, thank you, thank you, thank you for finally bringing in somebody who's not a cardinal sign this evening. <laughs> Aquarius is a fixed sign. So folks, if you are an Aquarius, a Leo, a Scorpio, or a Taurus, listen closely. This is this is going to concern you. Okay. Um, Marley's 11 degrees is like the middle of the sign on this cusp. So part of what's going on your, in your heart and mind right now, Marley, have to do with relationships of all kinds, all these wonderful relationships that you sometimes feel like you're sticking yourself in, you know, in glue to deal with. And the other part of it has to do with money. Lots and lots and lots of questions about money, how to handle it, where to put it, where to be stable. There's a lot of questions going on about that. There is a uh, hard aspect to the nodes. South node here in the chart is in, in Scorpio, so is the sun. North node in Uranus over here in Taurus, so there's a hard aspect there. And you're needing to take charge because this is this house is about you and your finances and how you handle things. You're needing to take charge of the your finances, of your earning ability, 
of the way you look at money and finances, of your own skills and developing skills. You're needing to really look at all these things and make sure that you are the one that's making the choices and the decisions about them and that it feels right in your heart that you're moving in the right direction. You have so many opportunities around you, but you know some of those opportunities are positive and some of them are very, very negative, okay? So, you know, you're in a situation right now where, you know, you make this choice and all kinds of good things come your way, but you make that choice and you can go into a financial hole. So the way to make sure that things are correct is to make sure that you talk to people who are well-educated about the things you need to know about, who have the right credentials, in other words, who are not personally vested in your choices i.e. That they're not trying to coerce you for any reason. And then when you've got all the information, then you make the final choices yourself and, and make those choices based upon your, your good mind, but also your intuition that says, yes, this feels right. Okay. Now, what's your specific question? Well, um, I am... Um... I have, as you say, I have uh, many opportunities. I have, I'm blessed with few talents and uh, I have very different field that I can work in and earn my life. And uh, I have a job since COVID. Um, I found a job daytime. I love, love, love this job, but um, the administration are giving me a hard time. And, uh, I feel really like dropping the job and uh, return to what I was doing before COVID. And um, I don't know if I should do that. Um, you know, and I have few opportunities. I, I'm, yeah, there are more opportunities than that as well around you. But in answer to just that specific question, if the job itself is supplying for you what you need financially, emotionally. If you go home at night and you're feeling good about the actual work that you're doing, it's a good job. The administration is not gonna be there forever. There are gonna be big changes coming in. So you can outweigh them and enjoy the job. So what I'm saying in here is that the legal issues that the administration is presently going in, you may or may not know about them, but somebody's, I'm sorry, my guides are using bad words. They're saying somebody's ass is in the fire. Uh, so you're getting the words. And when that uh, person is identified and removed from the situation, your job goes back to being the job that you really love. So you know, it's what, yeah, it's what I think too. I, I feel like uh, doing, being the one who do the move and, you know, talk well, to the, the, to the company about them. Yeah. So, so it is up the thing is the opportunities are interesting because you can outweigh that situation and be happy where you are or you can move in which case you might take a little bit of a dive and would not feel as comfortable for a time but then things would level out and you'll be fine again and things would be peaceful again but the thing is is that this is really a good job so it's it's worth really uh you know getting in touch with your own intuition and and not talking to the fellow employees, but getting the background information from people who actually know what's happening to before you make your choices. I.e., God, yeah. God, 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 God. She told me that uh, they, they'll be fired. Um, it's what I was hoping. And um, yeah, I yeah. Think that makes me, thank you, make me feel much better. <laughs> Um, yeah, thank you very much. And, and both of those, no matter which choice you make, those choices are going to lead to more opportunities that lead you in a new direction. But staying where you are ultimately gives you greater potential in terms of your both both the skill level of what you're dealing with and also your financial remuneration. It's, it's, a, it's a better position than you would get if you just walked away right now. Okay, and I think your intuition has said the same thing. Yeah, you know, financially I was doing that way b before. I was doing much more. Uh, mm -hmm. So as a singer, I was doing much more than um, working in an office. But 
you know, there's downside of it. And uh, okay, so it's all I wanted to do for now. Thank you so much. I wanted to know. And you know, there's also another thing that you might think about is doing both, and that there will be a way to do both if you choose to. Yeah, I still do both. Actually, I sing here and there. Yeah, I see you doing both, and yeah. I see being able to work out where they both sync and it works very smoothly for you. So yeah, yeah, enjoy it. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you very much for your help. You're welcome. And Lisa, who is our next caller? All right, the next person we're going to pick on tonight is Laura S. Laura, can you unmute on your end? Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? I can. Oh, wow. I'm I'm so thankful you picked me. Um, I really appreciate uh, you and Lisa. Um, happy Thanksgiving. I'm in Brooklyn, New York. I'm an Aquarius. And I am most thankful for um, my business going really well. So I'm really happy about that. I'm thankful to all my, you know, my clients and supporters and, and that. Um, hello? I'm here. I'm waiting for you to be done. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, most of what I would say to you as an Aquarian, I said to our, our previous caller, the only thing that I would add is that if you, you mentioned having your own business, this is a wonderful time for you to get additional backing and investment in your business because of the place of Saturn in the start. Oh. That may be available to you. To be able to expand. Oh, you said back, an in, a backing investor, you said? Yeah, it would be a good time for you to get an, an investment or somebody backing either what you're doing skill level or additional employees. Or the thing is, it's a good time for you to be able to count on input from other people that could be financial or from their skills. Okay? So if you're thinking about doing something like that, now is a good time for that. Now, what's your specific question? Um, so my question is, how can I get out of this rut? Even though my business is doing well, which I'm really thankful for, I'm kind of like stuck in a depression. Um, I, um, you know, I'm taking baby steps to get out of it. Like I work out here and there and I, I quit smoking weed. I thought that would help me. <laughs> But I'm still sort of I'm still sort of just stuck, and I just was hoping maybe your guides had um, some little advice for me. You know, um, I hate to. This is going to sound like a cop out, and in a way it is. Um, the first thing you need to be doing is working on your psychic protection, okay? Because your reason for the you know what I'm going to backtrack. I don't know if you folks know this, but way, 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 way back when, when I first started life, I started life as a PE teacher, okay? And one of the things I learned is that no matter how down or depressed those teenagers were, if I could get them out and get them to do jumping jacks, just do the exercises, all of a sudden the depression was gone. So, of course, I got to be, and you've already learned that doing some of the working out you've been doing was helping you to get rid of that depression. But it got me to look at that whole concept of depression. And I think you, you really hit it when you talked about feeling this pooling of energy, like nothing's happening. And so you're, you're feeling like there's all this uh, depression around you. So I looked deeper into that. And what I realized is that depression comes from low energy, lack of energy. And you have either a person or a situation around you that is draining your energy. Now, in our world today, we have, we, you know, we've got our government, we've got the economic finances all over the world, we've got oh, all kinds of things going on. COVID just it finished up, we've lost people that we cared about. You know, I mean, you can look at the world and just the world itself, all the people that are around you, when you're out in public, there's so many of them that have low energy and are feeling bad themselves, it's easy to get drained by them, okay? So when you go out in public, you definitely need protection, right? But in our own personal space, you've got somebody around you that 
I don't know if it's because they have a drug or alcohol problem, or maybe they had a serious illness, but you're trying to help this person and they are swallowing your life force faster than you can replenish it. So, you know, I, I, this is what I'm saying. It sounds like, it sounds, I, I hate to talk to people like, you know, that directly because right away you say, well, who could that person be? Um, actually, you have a history of people in your life like that. So it's hard to know which one because you also have trouble letting go of people. So that there's, there's a trail of them that have all taken your life force from you. But there's one in particular who's around you right now. And you're going to be able to identify that person because every time you're around them, you come away and all you really want to do is escape. And that feeling of escape is I have to get away so that I can breathe again. I have to get away so that I can live another day. And the hard part for you is that whoever that person is, I think in your heart you know who it is, but you don't want to know who it is because you love them, you care about them. And you know, you're going to have to eventually deal with that situation. You're going to have to protect yourself from that individual. You're going to have to stop um, giving your, your life essence to that individual because sooner or later it comes down to, do I love myself enough to want to stay alive? You know, making sense to you? Yeah. yeah. Makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It's a, it's a very hard, it's a hard situation. And, uh, you know, when I said I, I was going to cop out of this, it's because I didn't really want to tell you that. Um, that's the kind of stuff that should be given in a personal call, you know, one-on-one -on -one where, where the whole world is not listening. Um, but perhaps it was important for somebody else on the call who's in a similar situation to hear that. Okay. Uh, sometimes, sometimes it's not, sometimes life isn't easy, you know. It's true. So true. But um, I, I really, I really appreciate, um, you know, you taking some time to talk to me. It's, you know, it's important. <laughs> it is important. And I can tell you this, you're going to be okay. And you're going to eventually, remember what I said to the call at the very beginning of the call? And we're talking about the children. And I said, you know, when you when you were a mother and you have children, you're when your kids are just in that toddler stage and you're doing the best mom that you can be, that's that's where you're putting the money in the bank. Okay. Because when when what you do, the effort and the energy you put into that situation in the beginning creates the character that those children will have all of their lives. And it's that character that has to be relied on in a later date. And as those kids go through life, you learn that you can, you can advise, you can counsel, you can guide, you can give occasional support, but you can't make choices for them. And here's the important part. You can't hold yourself responsible for their choices because they are an independent soul separate from you with a soul journey and a soul contract, and you don't know what it is. Now, take what I said to her. My guides repeated that to you for a reason. Take what I said to her and apply it to your relationship with this other person right now that you apparently feel totally responsible for. And it is that sense of responsibility that is preventing you from entering into a different kind of relationship with them where you no longer allow yourself to be vampired. That's the best way that I can put it. And if you can't stop the vamping from going on, you will have to end the relationship. And can you stop the vamping? Oh yes, you can. But you have to change in your heart and mind how you relate. Just like a mother has to be able to let go of her need to live the child's life for them. You have to let that kid breathe and fall and do their own thing and know that you're not responsible. That's a separate soul, a separate individual from yourself. I hope that helps. Heard you loud and clear. Okay. Thank you. I love you, Sandy. Thank you so much. Thank and you. I love you too. Folks, I do. I love all of you so much. I hope you can feel my joy in your being able to be here with me. And 
bring my guides through. Sometimes the commentary that they bring through is joyous and happy. Sometimes it's a little heavy like that last call was, but it's always helpful and healing. I want to mention once again, um, before we meet again, our next psychic hour is on December 11th. Please write it down. Be, come back. If you're here on the call with me all through this evening and I did not get a chance to answer your question, please do send that simple question to me, either through Lisa or directly to the email attached to this webinar. And don't forget your name, where you're from, what you're grateful for, and your sun sign, that's real important, and your simple question. And also, um, please remember, because I won't talk to you before then, on December 8th is my What's Coming in 2023 webinar. So if that interests you, definitely make a point of being there. And I'll see you all hopefully back here again on December 11th. Thank you so much for being here with me this evening. And have a wonderful, wonderful Thanksgiving. Bye-bye for now.